Hi everyone, welcome to my lab. Right now I'm in the main part of our lab. This is where we primarily do our molecular lab work. That is, we isolate really small stuff like DNA from cells. Let's take a look around. Our main lab space is made up of several rows of lab benches like you can see here. And each of these benches is set up with stations for the different kinds of work that we do. In this first row you can see our lab coats hanging up. Next to those we have a microscope workstation. This is a specific type of microscope called a dissecting scope. It allows us to take a closer look at large samples without having to prepare microscope slides. On the opposite side of the room we have our fume hood. This is where we work with hazardous chemicals and it prevents toxic fumes from getting into the lab space. And then on this counter here, we have a sink and several scales that we can use to weigh out chemicals. And in this cabinet here, you can see where we store a lot of the chemicals and reagents that we use in experiments. Moving on to our next row of lab benches. Over here is where my desk is, um, and this is also the lab bench that I use for my experiments. We're going to take a closer look at some of the equipment on this bench in just a second. And then in this last cabinet is where we store all of our glassware, like beakers and flasks. Now let's take a closer look at some of the equipment on a lab bench that I showed you earlier. In these orange storage containers, we keep small tubes called microcentrifuge tubes. We use these when we are performing DNA extractions and other molecular experiments. Next to the tubes, we have a machine called a vortex, which we use to mix samples. Then we have a heat block, which heats our samples to a specific temperature. Next to the heat block, we have a storage rack for all of our pipettes. We use pipettes to measure out a very small, specific amount of liquid, and I'll demonstrate how we do that in just a second. And then finally, we have a centrifuge, which is a machine that we can use to spin our samples really, really fast. Now let's watch a demonstration of this equipment in action. When working at a lab bench, it's really important that we wear gloves to prevent contamination of our samples. Here's a closer look at one of the microcentrifuge tubes. When we are working with samples in these tubes, we use a tube rack to help hold and organize them. If we need to mix a sample, we just press the tube down on top of this vortex, and it agitates the sample to mix all the contents together. Sometimes we need to heat a sample to a specific temperature, which is when we use the heat block. When we turn it on, we can put the tube into this plate in the center, and that plate will heat up to whatever temperature we set it at. To transfer liquid between different microcentrifuge tubes, we use a pipette. A pipette can be set to transfer a specific amount that you can tell it by turning the dial at the top. Um, and then we use dis disposable pipette tips, which allow us to um, prevent contamination between samples. So when you pull, push down on the plunger and then slowly release it, it creates suction, which draws liquid up into our pipette tip. Um, and then we can transfer it to a different tube and then eject the tip so that we can get a new clean tip to use for the next sample. And finally we have our centrifuge. So this is used to separate out the liquid in our samples according to density. So when we open it up, you can see that it has a rotor in the center and this is what actually spins around super fast. So the tubes will fit into this rotor and then we can place the cap back on <laughs> and close it down. Um, and then on the front, we can set the speed at which we want to spin our samples and then for how long. So that concludes our tour of the main lab area, but next I'm going to show you a few other areas as well. So when we have hornworm caterpillars in our lab, we of course need to feed them. Out in nature, they eat um, leaves off of tobacco and tomato plants, but it's actually really difficult for us to grow enough plants to feed that many caterpillars. So we feed our hornworms an artificial diet. So I'm going to show you the room where we make that diet, which is down in the basement of our building. Here's our diet making room. Um, we keep all the ingredients down here in these bins that you can see. And then when we make the diet, we actually boil all the ingredients together in this big industrial boiler that I'm showing you here. So we add them all together and then turn it on and it heats them up. Um, and then we pour them into these bins over here. So the artificial diet is kind of just like jello, but it contains all of the vitamins and nutrients the caterpillars need to grow 
And the last area of the lab I'm going to show you is our incubator room. So here we have a whole bunch of incubators, as you can see. And these are kind of like refrigerators, except that instead of keeping things cold, they can keep things warm. And because we have so many different incubators to keep track of, we've given each of them a name, um, which is based on a famous robot. So you can see here, this incubator is named BB-8. And that's the end of our lab tour. Thanks for watching.